suggested that if it had been possible, it would have been better for everybody concerned if Yugoslavia had held together. And I don't think the lives of the people in those countries would be a lot different than they are today. They'd be better, actually, if anything. And they'd still have their identities. It would just be a very different system, and it would probably have been a lot more autonomy than they had, which they actually had quite a bit under Yugoslavia. But to your point, in the case of Iraq, there are a lot of people debating, you know, what do you do? Do you actually break into different states? Probably not. That might just be too dangerous. Do you break it into very autonomous regions under a very loose federal structure? Yeah, probably. That's a solution that I personally think is probably going to make the most sense. And we do have a bit of a model for that in Bosnia, which is the loosest federal system in the world. Um, now that problems come with that. There is no perfect solution. But in the case of Iraq, we might well end up there. And of course, as we talked about early on in this discussion, the big thing that's going to be the umbrella over that very loose federal system is sharing the oil wealth. And that, frankly, might be the only thing that actually would keep them together at the federal level. But it's an important thing that would. Uh, but I'll let Scott ask, uh, answer as well. I was looking for an analogy. And Yugoslavia's breakup is like the worst divorce you can imagine. 200,000 people were killed. And yeah, it settled into a pattern, but it, they went through a lot of hell. And as Lisa says, they're at the tail end of Europe now, whereas before they were, they were toward the front in Eastern Europe. Uh, is that going to be where Iraq ends up? It could well be. And I think uh, you know, Biden's plan makes a lot of sense, but that plan has to get a lot of buy-in. Otherwise, if we impose it, uh, there will be hell to pay.